thank the um, chair and ranking member. Um, I want to just pick up on a couple of these these points. Um, wondering if the gentleman believes that, as I have um, come to understand, that for example, the Air Force. Uh, and a Fox News article goes on diversity, equity, and inclusion hiring spree. Top job pays up $183,500. Uh, another uh, story about DOD spends $91,000 on diversity seminars for Air Force Band. Um, uh, other examples of, of, the, of, the, uh, of the expense on those positions. Do you think that, you know, privates making, you know, $11 an hour, do they think that they appreciate, you know, multiple... DEI jobs at $183,000, Mr. Chairman? No, and one of the reasons why we cut a billion dollars from the civilian workforce and reallocated those dollars to the young men and women who are joining the military at $11 an hour, uh, get a, a pay increase, which they desperately could use, and uh, from the E1s to E8s, and so that we have that in this bill. And the kinds of individuals in these positions um, we're pretty familiar with the uh, uh, story of Calissa Wing, who, over a series of statements, um, you know, was noted to say, have said her goal was to, quote, tear down the system in education. Uh, there was, quote, time for a racial reckoning, end quote, time for a revolution, uh, quote, un end quote. Uh, then was put under probe by the Pentagon uh, over tweets which referred to white people as Karens, quote, unquote. I'm, quote, exhausted with these white folks in these professional development sessions, she wrote, end quote. This lady actually had the caudacity to say that black people can be racist too. I had to stop the session and give Karen the business, end quote. We are not the majority. We don't have power, end quote. Does that sound like something you think advances the mission of the United States military? That's why a lot of these uh, uh, issues that you're uh, bringing up we pulled out of the defense bill. We cleaned that up. We want to get back to the primary mission of the United States military, and that's to win wars. And uh, I think we've gotten off track. I would, I would share that. Um, you know, the, the position, I would note, gives cover to the practice of individuals like uh, General C.Q. Brown, who's actively promoted officers on the basis of race, actively discriminating against officer candidates, currently being nominated uh, for chairman of Joint Chiefs. Uh, I hope the Senate will take note. Uh, of what's going on over at the Pentagon, and I just want to applaud you for taking on this issue that is developing and promoting r racial divisiveness at the Pentagon, which no doubt has some impact on the overall state of affairs uh, at the Pentagon. And I would note, I assume that the gentleman is aware, a June 30, 2023 Wall Street Journal article titled, quote, the military recruiting crisis, even veterans don't want their families to join, end quote, detailing troubling data. For example, the Army in 2022 had its toughest recruiting year since the Advent of all, all volunteer military in 1973 and missed the mark by 25%. This year it expects to end up about 15,000 short of its target of 65,000 recruits. The Navy expects to fall short by as many as 10,000 of its goal. The Air Force said it's anticipating coming in 3,000 below its goal. The Marine Corps met its target last year of sending 33,000 to boot camp and expects to meet its goals this year, but its leaders describe recruitment as challenging. This is the environment we're creating at the Pentagon. I assume that that had uh, something to do with some of the priorities that you all were looking at with respect to the appropriations process? And we tried, uh, I think we did a long, went a long way to fix that. And uh, hopefully that that'll end up uh, helping our recruitment efforts. Do you think it is beneficial? People talk about the state of the military. Um, obviously, we want to be focusing on its core mission, having the assets to carry out that mission, uh, making sure that we've got the training to carry out that mission. Uh, but is it helpful? Uh, when you've got the Pentagon spending a, a significant amount of money, but more importantly, time and resources with respect to, for example, uh, uh, gender transitions or, uh, uh, you know, an agenda uh, involving, for example, Pride Month. The Air Force released a memo entitled, quote, the Department of the Air Force observance of LGBTQ Pride Month, June 2023, which empowered installations commanders to plan and conduct appropriate activities. They flyer uh, advertising Robbins Air Force Base 2023 Pride Month events uh, with uh, game nights and diversity color runs in our history and our time uh, panel discussion. Until this year, installations were hosting drag queen story time. Drag queen story time. Like, I could go on and on and on. I'm not going to sit here and continue to consume the time of this committee or, or the body 
uh, going over the absurdities that we've been seeing occur in the United States military. But I, I just want to applaud you all for taking at least a step in the direction of trying to restore the military to its core purpose. Because even if you believe that all of this garbage that I was just talking about is somehow beneficial for the military, which is absurd on its face, the fact is when you're $32 trillion in debt, the fact is when you're $2 trillion in debt per year in deficit spending, the fact is when we've got a extraordinary level of debt mounting in the future, as we know it is going to be about $50 trillion in 10 years, why on earth would you spend a single dollar a single dollar for something that isn't going to make more rockets, bullets, planes, and boats, and trained individuals to use those things in the event of war. I wonder if the gentleman agrees generally with that sentiment. Well, in this bill, uh, we, uh, we absolutely spend money to in increase our lethality of the United States military. And that means more munitions, that means more missiles, more airplanes, more ships, uh, and more training for our military personnel. Uh, that's where we, uh, that's what the intent of this bill is, that's where we're going with this bill, and to change direction of the United States military. Uh, I can't run the executive branch, all I can do is do what I can in this bill, and I think we're moving in the right direction, I would hope to get your support. Do you think that the um, additional funds in this bill, over the 2023 levels, combined with the policy priorities that Congress is, of course, um, well within its rights to uh, advocate for in terms of how funding is allocated. Um, do you think, in your view, and in your conversations with, for example, Mr. Rogers and others expert on the matter, that this will make our military stronger and in a uh, heading in a stronger direction than it uh, was prior to this appropriation? Uh, yeah, so we, we cut $20 billion out of the President's uh, budget request that we didn't believe uh, was appropriate in the Defense Appropriation Bill. We reallocated those funds to lethality, to ships, to planes, to training, to personnel, and to make sure that we have the strongest military in the world. And if we go to war, we win, they lose. That's what the intent of this bill is. And that's, uh, we spent, uh, you know, I spent a lot of time, we both spent a lot of time on this. We have our disagreements, but I think we all agree that if we have, we must have the best military in the world to make sure that we can, uh, if we unfortunately have to go to war, we win. I yield back. Chair, thanks the gentleman. The gentleman yields back. Chair, recognize the gentlelady from New Mexico. Thank you, uh, 